So, that other upload's there. It's coming up. It's uploading. I don't know if it's up now or up later or whatever. But this just came out a couple days ago. Why you should never trust a pelican with your child. Skitten's behind me. She's not joining me for this video. Sorry, love. I do love you. But I need this. What the hell? I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> Casual Geographic. <laughs> I need this, man. I need it bad. Okay? I need to pick me up. And your mom was busy. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> I gotta turn my headphones on. Bear with me. I am connecting my headphones. There is no intro. I'm sad, but I don't want to be sad. So I'm using videos to fill the void. Am I with my people yet? All right, let's get it. <laughs> this is Malgas Island. And up to 60,000 of these birds called Cape Gannets will nest here. But don't worry, I'm gonna get to it. So normally these parents take turns with one going out for food with the other staying behind to guard the chick. But because of overfishing, oftentimes both parents will go out for food, leaving the chick all alone on the island. Which wouldn't be a problem if they didn't know that. Because groups of these white pelicans will fly over to the islands and then walk around looking for any unsupervised game. They look suspicious. So that they can grab the baby birds and eat them alive while they're still struggling. Dude, and sometimes look at they'll just let go. You can, dude, he's so cold blooded because he makes sure to find the clip where you can see the baby bird wiggling in its mouth. Jesus Christ. This guy, man. Push the He's parents a out the way and then swallow the newborn children right in front of them. Jesus somehow gets Christ. Worse. Those same pelicans will fly back to their nest and vomit the half digested, recently murdered baby birds for the pelican chicks to eat. And because Cape Gannets have no real way to defend themselves, pelicans have no reason to stop. And since pelicans Damn. obviously don't have teeth, those chicks' last moments were spent suffocating while being digested alive by stomach acid, only to get regurgitated and eaten twice. Dinosaurs never went extinct, they just rebranded with feathers. You know, penguins will. Do we need to go like. Because it's, 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 it's a, <laughs> this happens in the wild. This is like a real thing. Do we need to be putting like censorship bars or something around like the, the wiggling dying children in the video? Is that like a necessary thing we have to do? Because I, man. Sell themselves, but like know. in that way, let me explain. This Wait, is really? the deli penguin. Wait, really? The fish birds do it? Dude, have you guys seen my famous fish birds argument on Skitten's channel? Penguins are fish birds. They are literally fish birds is what they are, okay? But they're also prostitutes. They're like bunny ranch level. <laughs> you hear a messed up penguin fact, it usually involves them. So basically, Adelis build their nests out of piles of pebbles, which means two things. Pebbles are cute. a penguin's former currency, and the penguin with the most pebbles is considered the most attractive. Cool. So female Adelie penguins will offer their bodies Excuse me, I'm opening in exchange a for a rock, and yeah, it's exactly what I'm making it sound like. Sometimes the female will give it up to a male in exchange for a pebble, even though she already has a mate waiting for her back at the nest. Scientists can't really confirm Damn. this, but it's believed the females do this so that if their mate gets packed up by a seal or something, they still have a backup. And before you feel bad for them, just remember that male Adelies have been known to have relations with injured females, chicks, penguin corpses, and one even hooked up with the ground. That, that didn't make me feel any better. That didn't make me feel any better. Matter of fact, it made me feel significantly worse. I didn't need to know any of that. You could have kept that to yourself. Look at his face, too. Like, he knows he's going to hell for this. And uh, what I also love about it is that you can't overreact how disgusted you are because it's disgusting. It just is. It's proboscis. What? And we're going to get me a... Sorry, hold on. Let's read. Oh! Ocean of... Penguins what? are dressed as Wall Street brokers, and they have the moral compass of one, too. Be disgusted with me. Oh! Do it again, but in slow motion. I don't like how that makes me feel. It's the same feeling that we got from that SCP, that red SCP that, like, grows on people. It's giving me that same feel. Ew. Ocean of f***ed up place, ain't it? That is Nermedia, but it's also called the Ribbon Worm. That thing that it's doing is probably gonna get me a guideline violation. Yeah, that's how they eat. So that white stuff is his proboscis, and they'll basically shoot it out over a crab or a clam or whatever the f*** this thing eats. Also, it gets trapped and can't escape. Some types even inject a paralyzing toxin so their prey can't move, and then they'll add digestive juices so they can digest their prey before it's even in their mouth. And then this worm sucks his proboscis back in while also pulling its prey towards its mouth. It's like Spider-Man with a vor fetish. And some worms can shoot out a web that's 30 times their body length. That'd be like a man eating with a 180 foot tongue with hands. So yeah, that's not a worm enjoying December 1st. That's not a worm shooting out its liquid daycare. Ah! That is a worm trying to eat a man. The more you know. Horrifying sound of a woman becoming a hashtag. <laughs> it's on his hands. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. That is gross. Are you That okay? is gross. Look. Look. 
Are you looking? Yeah, that's not a worm enjoying December 1st. That's not okay, a wait, look. Out its liquid ah! that is a it's on his hands. <laughs> oh my god. It sounded like you were dying over here. I just wanted to confirm that you were good. Look, I'm going to slow it down no. in the video, too. Oh, I'm not watching It's that. trying to eat him. That's how they eat. It's like a giant tongue with little things on it, and then it's going to, like, drag it back into its mouth. That makes me feel so weird. I don't like that at all. If you could just tone it down a little bit, some of us are trying to work here. I'm gonna start sending shit like this to your phone. You keep fucking with me. <laughs> that is a woman trying to eat. Look at a gif of it. You know. Horrifying sound of a woman becoming a hashtag. That's terrible. <laughs> the biggest mistake you could make is going to save that woman, because that's not a woman getting turned into a headline. That was a female mountain lion in heat. Female cougars will often make these shrieking, blood-curdling screams when they're in estrus. It's like their Batman okay. signal for getting laid. Answering that call when it's not for you is how you meet Batman's parents. Of course I'm exaggerating, cougars are way more afraid of you and will probably go the other way if you pull up on them. What won't go away are the bricks in your pants after you try to be a hero and make eye contact <laughs> with this walking steroid. I know it's not related, but I'm still gonna mention it. Tigers have been known to imitate the sounds of their prey to fool them into a false sense they of security have, before yeah. they turn them into a Yeah, hatchet. they have. In fact, That's I don't think about it, this is a Margay, and they do the exact same thing with baby monkeys. Now, I'm not saying the cougars do it on purpose, but I am saying that nature is a bitch like that. Also, I forgot to mention that cougars tend to scream while mating. So if you're ever alone in bed and hear a woman on a Tinder date with Joe from you, don't worry. It's just cougars getting more action than you. <laughs> Joe from you. I've seen enough episodes of that show to get that reference. <laughs> He really yelling too. I guess she really yelling. Okay, so here's why you and your dog should never go swimming with a kangaroo. Whew, One of the man. kangaroo's biggest ops are dingoes, and dingoes often hunt by chasing their prey into a dingo ate my baby. towards other members of the pack. It's like their version of catching you in an alley. Some dingoes in Central Australia will even chase kangaroos into fences where the dingoes know they can't escape. So whenever a kangaroo is being pushed by a predator, Buffy they'll is. instinctively head to the nearest body of water and then go in where it's deep enough for their arms to be underwater. I call this the f around and find out. If the dingo follows it, then the kangaroo will take its arms and he force it in the water it. until it gives up or gives down. Since they've had years of practice, kangaroos are really good at it. Mm -hmm. Problem is, the generational trauma of being constantly hunted by dingoes means kangaroos are born racist towards anything that even looks like a dog. Oh. Which is why kangaroos will attempt to reverse baptize any dogs that mess around and get too close. And if you go in trying to be a hero, they'll happily take the two for one. That's of course assuming wow. they can just kick the soul out you first. Now, a lot of prey animals will run towards water to avoid problems. But this kangaroo is the problem. This isn't an invitation, it's an offer to get Uber to your ancestors. You know, f*** around and find out. known creature gives in New York to a heart attack. What the fuck is that thing? It's a fucking bell, It's got the fucking virus! I both can and cannot the, fully explain it's what- It's got the fucking virus! Oh my god! That is a quote, bro. That's a quote. I love it. It's got the fucking virus! That's I both awesome. can and cannot fully explain what that is. It's That's called awesome. a Kalugo, but it's also known as a flying lemur, even though there's somehow two lies in that one name. They don't fly, they glide, and since they spend most of their lives in their trees, they basically just airdrop themselves from branch to branch. And it's not a lemur. Lemurs are primates, making them related to gorillas, chimps, and us. But this thing isn't a primate. Whoever named it would probably name an atheist faith. They use that stretchy membrane called the patagium to glide like flying squirrels, and they can travel 650 feet without stopping. He got like a, a fleshy thing where his thing should be. That's messed up. That's 200 meters or a little bit less than two football fields. But it's not it's a flying squirrel. There was a time people thought they were- It's kind of like Han Solo, right? When they compressed him in that big old thing. You know, that's kind of what it looked like. It looked like he's stuck inside of something that ate it. Or that's a little bit less than like. two football fields. But it's not a flying squirrel. There was a time people thought they were just God's rough draft of a bat, but Kalugos aren't related to bats. That's either. what I thought it was and a bat. And if you look at the order Giant they're bat. in, Dermoterra, they're the only living members. It's like huh. pulling up to a family reunion and finding out you're the only one left. It's and just me. Because their entire personality involves flying, they're too slow and awkward to survive on the ground. And for an animal that lives in the trees, they're pretty mid-climbers. They're so bad at life that being nocturnal is probably the only thing keeping them alive. <laughs> Mother Kalugos will carry their babies everywhere for the first six months. Which made some people believe it was that's, a marsupial, like some type that's of deformed big, That's a long time But in it's none world. of those things. So what the f*** is it? Well, scientists perform genetic analyses on them. Basically a 23andMe for a flying carpet. And it turns out their closest evolutionary relative are primates. 
It's pretty much get the closest the you can get to primates without actually being one. Which means this dehydrated Dollar Tree chipmunk is more related to you <laughs> than it is to an actual squirrel or bat. You know. Are you wow. having your... So there's a there's a channel called It's Okay to Be Smart, which I've had a couple requests to do reactions to. We won't do them this week, but we will get to them probably next year. Um, and he talks about evolutionary boundaries, right? Uh, and it deals with like the fitness of the evolution or whatever, and explains why people would never have wings, essentially, because it wouldn't make sense for our hands to turn into the thing that turns into before wings. So Hearing that, I assume there were no primates that had gliding abilities, you know, because primates went a different direction in terms of their evolutionary fitness, according to the video, and my Anthropology 101 course I took seven years ago. <laughs> and there you go. There's one. I didn't know there was any. A good day today. That's cool. Well, don't, because we just found out there's venomous sharks swimming in the Thames River in London. I didn't you know, know that. sharks, right? You know yeah. those things with a built-in GPS that can smell blood from another area code? With a bite kind of like getting hit with a truck with teeth. Nature said F it gave them venom and decided to make it our problem. It's venom, now, as not a poison, right? Because that's what I had confused before, but it's a venom. Rule you'd normally expect this kind of nonsense from Australia, so the fact that it's in London makes me really think it's God giving us the middle finger. The worst part is we really shouldn't be surprised. Sharks came up while Saturn was single because they're older than its rings, along with most dinosaurs and trees. That's sick. So I'm not even surprised they involved venom. I'm just surprised it took me this long to find out. Now, to be fair, the sharks are taupe sharks. And toe nope. sharks are about 6 feet long, 80 something pounds, they've never been known to attack you. School hmm. sharks! But they also found venomous spur dog sharks. And they have venom producing spines that can cause pain and swelling in humans. Apparently in 2009, a man was sent to the hospital after one of these sharks allegedly impaled his forearm with a spine. God. And there's even more venomous sharks out there, like the dogfish and smooth hounds. Now the chances of a venomous shark being in your obituary are very, very low. You're actually more likely to get turned into a hashtag by a vending machine or a very pissed off ex. But <laughs> we can now add charts to the list people. of animals that are venomous for no reason. Here's why hanging out with flamingos can be really bad for your health. Right. Shout out to this comment for reminding me. Because African lesser flamingos will flock in lakes like Natron in Tanzania. And some of the water they choose to stand in is so toxic Yeesh. that if you tried to wade in it for two minutes, it would strip the skin off your legs completely. Because these know. are soda lakes, and because minerals like sodium carbonate flow into it, the lake ends up becoming overly basic and extremely salty. Did you match your shirt to the lake on purpose, or were you just feeling extra fly today? Because I'm stealing that shirt. Don't leave it around me. Yeah. I hate Don't chemistry. I had to retake it freshman year, and I should be entitled to compensation, so I'm not even finna lecture, y'all. But basically, low pH means Boom. something's acidic, high pH means it's really basic. And because these lakes can have a pH of nearly 11, the water's so caustic that it burns the flesh of humans and animals that are not already adapted to it. Cool. If it gets in your eyes, you'll be like Stevie Wonder. It's in my eyes! Flamingos can survive in hypersalinated basic lakes because they have tough skin and scales on their legs to prevent burns. So apparently they can drink boiling water without flinching. Why do you do all that? Well, flamingos get bodied by everything, including other birds. So to avoid getting harassed, they live in a place so inhospitable that nobody goes to the effort of following them. It's like if Ben Simmons left Philly to go play in Utah. Utah not even a bad team, but when's the last time you went to Utah for spring break? Never, and that's why that's, they did this. I swear I wasn't gonna make this funny, video, dude. but Buddy Triple dared me, so here's how f***ed up Lion King would be if it was a little more accurate. This might have been the end of the movie. Baboons will kidnap they unintended do. lion cubs, and that usually ends with one less lion. And last time we watched this video, somebody put in the comments how messed up would it be if they got the influence of that scene from seeing a bamboo hold a baby lion, not knowing it was gonna kill it afterwards, right? And I was like, that's one of those conspiracy theories I can Obviously, really I know get Rafiki's behind. Manual. You can delete the comment you're probably typing, but primates have a natural hatred towards big cats like lions and leopards. Which means this scene would have sent the movie to the credits and turned Simba into initials on a Twitter bio. As the new head male, the first thing Scar would have done was murder Simba and Nala, since when new males take over, they destroy whatever cubs the previous male left behind. Yeesh. Which leads me to the next fact, Simba and Nala would have been half-siblings because they would have had the same father. Most lion prides only have one male that's allowed to mate. Sometimes the yeah, lionesses get something on the side, but typically their options are restricted to one. Which means this scene would have required a lot of therapy. <laughs> Family therapy. Meerkats are one of the most murderous Family animals therapy. in the world, and that's not even a joke. There was a study related. to see what mammal commits the most murders, and the animal at the top... Muskrat. Meerkats. Meerkat, red tear monkey. That's like super low res on my end. I don't know if it is for yours. Do I have this thing turned down? Yes, that didn't help. Yeah, about 20% of meerkat deaths were caused by another meerkat. And now we know why Damn. Timon was on his own. Also, Simba would have been kicked out of the pride regardless. Because where lionesses spend their lives in the pride they were born in, males typically leave after two to three years, and it's usually the head male that drives them out. 
which means Mufasa would have likely been the one showing Simba the door. You don't play with the fuck out. Movie, <laughs> baby, but he dared me, so it's not my fault. That was good. That was really good. I think I want to do a video of going through like his uh, his TikTok vid since I'm on my computer now. I'll be able to uh, go through it if I just charge my tablet. I can go through them. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining me for that. Um, hopefully, I would hope it would be under better circumstances. But, you know, we do what we have to do. I might end up watching this video again with my wife on my wife's channel. But if it doesn't happen, thanks for joining me. If it does, I'll see you there. Holla, y'all. Peace.